Uh, my name is Alastair Tudor. I'm the Operations Manager with Somerset Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm joined by Phil Wilson this afternoon uh, from Insurance Brokers Gallagher's Insurance. Um, Phil is going to talk through some of the main considerations that businesses need to think about uh, during the coronavirus outbreak uh, in terms of their insurance, whether that be cyber insurance, uh, insurance around property or, or, or uh, belongings, uh, and the main things are really that, that you need to consider. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Phil. Um, Phil, over to you. Uh, welcome to Gallagher Insurance's uh, guidance webinar on how to help protect your property, protect your people, and protect your cyber during the lockdown period of this pandemic. Uh, we appreciate we are five and a half weeks or so into the lockdown, but as the fluidity of the, fluidity of the insurance market reaction settles, we feel it prudent to consolidate the guidance received and provided to mitigate known or emerging insurance related issues around working from home. So today is the 1st of May 2020 and this record, recording is based on our understanding at this time. The next slide please Alistair. Um, so who is Gallagher other than the Premiership Rugby Sponsorships um, sponsors? Uh, not that we're getting much rugby at present. Um, we are one of the largest global brokers and UK brokers um, yet we regard ourselves as a community-based broker with over 70 offices in the UK all empty at present uh, with approximately 5,000 UK staff and over 33,000 worldwide colleagues all currently working from home. In our retail business we look after a million customers placing insurance premiums um, of over two billion dollars across the UK. In the southwest we have hubs in Exeter, Torquay and Bristol employing over 140 highly skilled insurance brokers and in-house claims management team. Next slide. So a little bit about me. My name is uh, Philip Wilson. I'm a business executive for Gallagher based in Taunton, where I've worked for almost 35 years of my insurance career. I'm a chartered insurer with a NEBOSH health and safety qualification, and I'm an, um, and am the immediate past president of the insurance, uh, Extra Insurance Institute. I specialize in commercial and farming insurance sectors, um, but that's enough about me. I'm getting my tongue tied on this. <laughs> Before we get started, I'd like to point out that the content of this presentation is generic um, and may not be applicable or specific to all. If you're unsure about making changes to any of your practices or would like to understand uh, how your policies would respond in, in to a particular circumstances, circumstance, please speak to your insurance advisor. So next slide, please. So let's start with protecting your property. Some useful guidance you may have adopted or may wish to adopt as the lockdown continues. So we'll start with utilities. So where possible, turn off the main mains water supply, ensuring this doesn't isolate or disrupt your sprinkler or firefighting support systems. If it's safe to do so, you should also isolate the incoming gas supply. Isolate critical circuits, excluding critical machinery such as IT servers, fire and security alarm systems and CCTV equipment. And where possible, make a concise list of all services and valves isolated or closed, and where there are, or, and where, where they are, to ensure that you reinstate them, reinstate them, um, or when able. Critical infrastructure. Ensure all fire security uh, and, and uh, alarms, sprinklers, and CCTV systems are fully operational and maintained. Ensure all internal fire doors and access points are secured shut and check all fire and security alarm panels are fault free and fully operation during the unoccupancy period. Machinery. Ensure all machinery is safely turned off and left in a condition for the extended period without damage or degradation. Remove from or drain processing equipment and machinery of flammable, combustible or hazardous liquids and materials and dispose and store safely for future reuse. Where, where you're still working from business premises, ensure all maintenance, inspection and cleaning process are, processes are compliant with your health and safety plan. Unoccupancy. This is where you should advise your broker or insurance company where your premises are going to be occupied during the lockdown period. Most insurers are now happy to expend, extend their unoccupancy warranties subject to notification and good practice mitigating risk management as detailed here. Ensure all premises management companies are aware and have sufficient emergency contact details. Inspect and more importantly, record weekly checks on your premises and critical systems operations 
obviously subject to government advice, ensuring a contingency plan uh, if those checking are required to self-isolate and cannot obviously check. Clearly post uh, emergency contact details on the premises and, and obviously remove post accumulations upon inspection or, or temporary redirect your post uh, as, as an alternative uh, option. So security, check perimeter security, fencing, integrity, shutters, doors, uh, and letter boxes sealed, as well as remote signaling uh, security systems are all working. Shop front display stock should be removed and, and consider boarding if no security grill, grills or shutters and, and if in a high risk area. Ensure sufficient key holders are located close to the, in case of alarm activation and remove critical or high value equipment and stock to, in, to secure locations within the premises or if external site um, um, is used, notify your insurers. So external risk factors. Ensure external waste uh, not already disposed of is stored at least five meters, but ideally 10 meters from the premises in locked containers or compounds. So this would include things like pallets. Communicate with um, reliant external supply chains on, the on their resilience. And if you consider stockpiling, ensure your, in uh, your insurers are aware of the highest, higher sum insured. Engineering inspection services uh, remain available with, um, with priority given to essential service currently for plant and equipment of these companies. However, if you speak to your in inspection providers, they are generally working normally uh, with the exception of working in care homes and, and doing uh, inspections at private dwelling houses. Vehicles, uh, laid up vehicles generally uh, is, is the point here. So saw on all vehicles laid up and notify your broker and insurer. There may be a reduction in premium. Um, laid up vehicles should be kept off the road and ideally locked in a building, garaged or a secure compound with tools and stock uh, um, removed. Where you do lay your vehicles up in a compound, um, space the vehicles uh, apart and, and away from the building as well to prevent um, fire spread across the fleet um, or, the, or the premises if one vehicle should, be, um, uh, should catch fire. It's easy to lose one vehicle than lose four or five or at least the, build, or the building either. Check the government new guidance on MOT and vehicle excise tax rules at vehicles um, or those unable to, to be MOT during the lockdown. Temporary change of use activity or, an, or occupancy premises. Many biz businesses have stepped up to meet the call um, to produce PPE equipment, etc. Um, provide takeaway services rather than pure restaurant or delivery, uh, deliver foods and, uh, other than being, uh, let's say, a farm or a butcher shop all of which are diverse from their current business description uh, um, and their premises use and activities. So most insurers are being pragmatic about this and in, in, you know, in their acceptance of this, um, but you should notify your broker and make sure your insurers are aware that your, your change of use, your change of activities. Update your risk assessments and your health and safety plan to accommodate the new risks and the new activities. Um, and remember to train temporary new or existing staff in the new roles and new activities that you might be uh, doing accordingly. Temporary reallocation of assets. The main one is office equipment being sent home for staff to be able to work from home. Most insurers again are cool about this um, from a business or personal home perspective, appreciating, appreciating the temporary nature. But if you are now manufacturing at home, again notify your insurers or your brokers with full details. So how many of those did you miss or not uh, receive adequate guidance on when you locked down your business? Hopefully not many, um, but we now move on to protecting your biggest asset, your people. Next slide, please. So first heading is health and safety. It's critical your health and safety plan isn't sitting with your business continuity plan on a dusty top shelf. Uh, changing risks and a changing supervision require new risk assessments to maintain your protection and legal duty of care towards your staff. Additional equipment at home or cables and possible overloading electricity sockets with children and pets uh, are added into the assessment mix. And we've all experienced that. Um, connections. A lot has been mentioned in the media about uh, well-being for those unfamiliar with working from home. So it is critical to frequently con connect and reassure staff, pre preferably by phone. 
When other mediums are used, ensure it is clear, concise, accurate, uh, and regularly updated. Other mediums should be Skype, WebEx, or closed WhatsApp groups. Um, and is there a staff helpline? Exercise and breaks. Encourage your staff to build a physical exercise, such as a daily walk, run, or ride into their daily routines. Gardening, online workouts, home gym, if, they can, if they've got one, should be encouraged. And encourage breaks being taken. Proper lunch, coffee breaks, away from the invariably smaller screen um, to, and, and work to refresh and de-stress. Social media. Discourage use, usage to view updates and, uh, of news reports, which could lead to anxiety and, and never use social media to handle business. Uh, switch off notifications to enable concentration on tasks more, more effectively is, is a good, good one. Natural environment, encourage working close to a window, not only for natural light, uh, but also with the option um, to be able to open the window for fresh air. Encourage going outside into gardens, balconies, during the breaks if possible, again, to change of environment. Routine, these can help um, during cha these challenging times and new working practices. Encourage your staff to, to plan daily and weekly tasks and accept where possible working nine to five, where, where possible working nine to five at home may not be possible uh, with the family and children at home. So flexibility for, uh, for efficiency is key to, to being encouraged to, uh, and, and to be encouraged. Uh, learning something new. Now is the ideal time to stimulate the mind and learn something new like a language, a skill or a hobby with plenty of online resources and apps. And the final one, self-care. Physical and mental well-being can take different forms, but key is exercise, balanced diet, enough sleep, and the use of other trusted methods, meditation and yoga um, for those so inclined. Importantly though, quality time with family and online communication with friends and family will support the, your staff's well-being. The simple message is, we are, take, we are talking protecting your people, uh, is to look after your people, your people because folks, as they are being both resilient and flexible under trying circumstances in keeping your business going and they will be there when it's all over. So to type cyber, we ignore this one at our peril. Next slide please. So scams. Uh, there's been an increase in highly sophisticated scam attempts uh, using details like emails, messages and texts which are personalized to the individual to validate and authenticate bogus requests, e.g. update your WhatsApp gold or refunds on vehicle or income tax. We may, you may have seen them, I know I have. Um, links and attachments, check the question, check, sorry, check and question anything unusual and unexpected. The check before you click policy is the best approach. And if in any doubt, don't save nor forward it, but call your IT support team. Or the, um, or the sender if known to authenticate it. The, the National Cyber Security Centre has issued a warning that cyber criminals are embedding malware into website links and attachments in sites um, being searched for the latest COVID-19 news. Unfamiliar sites. Malicious websites may appear legitimate and offer inf information on COVID-19 um, new procedures, but be aware of requests for name, usernames, passwords, and other sensitive information. The rule of thumb is stick to known sites by their direct URLs. Unexpected emails. Phishing emails often create a false sense of urgency, fear, or threat. Legitimate organizations will not use these tactics. Check email senders' addresses, format, and if telephone numbers are provided, check the numbers' veracity. And if you have, a, have to email to report, and if you have to email to report um, to your ITT, IT team, always at attach the suspicious email, don't forward it. Unprotected video conferencing. This is a, a big one at present, as we can imagine. Video conferences are being used by millions to maintain both work and social activities during the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, popular video conferencing app, Zoom, uh, has seen a sharp increase in use. In, including fake Zoom sites and files used to steal personal information and plant malware. These attacks typically occur via emails containing malicious links or files. 
In addition, some video conferencing meetings have a public link that if discovered could allow uninvited uh, users to sign in to other people, other people's calls, usually to share inappropriate information. This tactic is known as Zoom bombing, um, but can happen on other video conferencing tools as well. Phishing, other uh, malicious incidents are rapidly growing, a gr growing threat to unsecured video conferencing. If possible, meeting house should use approved web conferencing uh, services and review the audience to make sure that all the par participants are invited. If you do need to use video conferencing facilities at home or for your family, follow these tips to properly secure your video conference. Generate a random meeting ID uh, when event scheduling, scheduling and require a password to join. Control who enters the meeting with a waiting room feature. Lock your meeting after it starts. And to prevent participants from screen sharing, choose only host under who can share and disable file transfer. Uh, next screen, next uh, slide, please. So protecting uh, data security. Avoid staff using their own PCs if, uh, if their operating systems are, are not Windows 10 um, with up-to-date antivirus is, is ideal. Um, can your IT support help check and update this for them? That's an idea. Use virtual private network VPN with multi-factor authentication where possible as traffic is encrypted and has a high basic level of security. If remote desktops are used, are being used, uh, ensure 12 character passwords unique from other business passwords are, are being used as most remote desktops broadcast with usernames in place, uh, le leaving cyber criminals to, uh, to only guess the password. Connectivity. Do you have enough licenses for remote access? Will your employee have enough bandwidth at home to share with other enforced home workers and children using their internet games? If your employee is not provided with a home company mobile, arrangements will have to be made to cover the cost of calls. Um, use caller ID to hide personal numbers uh, when dialing out for business purposes. Clients on social media. Prohibit the use of social media for all client uh, specific content, contact. Detail all data tra information transfer that could expose the individual. Check your company's social media policy is robust uh, and shared with all staff. Confidential waste and G G GDPR. Uh, restrict printing at home to avoid confidential waste disposal issues and possible GDPR um, breaches. Talking remaining G GDPR compliant, or talking about remaining GDPR compliant, are you aware that if a company, da if company data never leaves the core work, it was only in, in transit? whilst your employee logs off from their work PC server and logs onto their home PC. Data in transit hasn't left the organization. In contrast, data printed onto paper and taken home is data transferred. Uh, files downloaded and stored on personal devices is also data transferred. It, therefore, it is recommended that companies where possible keep data in transit. If your organization has made efforts to become GDPR compliant, uh, these are the test. These are testing times to maintain that wall around your data. Keep the data in transit. So hopefully, this has provided you with some additional considerations and practice beyond those that you've already identified and, and probably in implemented. Next slide, please. We have more useful guidance and resources available on our Pandemic Information Hub. So please visit it on our website ajg.com/uk. We've shared some of our specific PDF guidance sheets uh, on the Somerset Chamber of Commerce's COVID-19 advice page too. Uh, and please ensure that you speak to your insurance advisor if you're unsure about making changes to your, pra to your practices or how your policy uh, would respond in, in uh, a particular circumstance. The current present, um, con the content of this presentation obviously is generic and may not directly be applicable uh, to your specific circumstances. Next slide, please. So that concludes our webinar. Thank you for your time, and we hope you found it of value. Uh, I'll again leave you with my contact details should you have any questions or require any insurance specific advice. So from me, stay safe, and thank you very much. Thanks very much, Phil. There's some really excellent 
and very sensible advice in there, certainly around, you know, things like company vehicles, which are not a consideration for, for us as an organisation, but I'm sure there's lots of businesses out there that, uh, that have got vehicles that are either sitting dormant and could be sawned and, and, uh, and maybe receive a reduction on their insurance. So really good, good advice there and certainly the cyber, as you point out, you know, we, we've seen an awful lot more activity on the cyber front um and uh and, and it's a real good consideration something to keep on talking to people about so thank you very much um phil wilson from gallagher's insurance thank you again really interesting uh, and as you say uh, stay safe stay well and uh, all the best thanks thank you